The Land, Monsters, by Dr. Alaron Kong, narrated by Nick Podell. Dedication This book is dedicated to my fans. Creating these worlds has been one of the most amazing experiences of my life. I'd always wanted to be a writer, to make worlds of wonder. I knew it would feel amazing. What I never expected was that it would connect me with truly wonderful people around the world. Thank you for walking this path with me. There is so much more to come. Chapter 1, Day 150, Jurin 1, 0, AOC Richter cursed. He was in a lair. A lair! Not only that, he'd finally found out where the high-level monsters were hiding. Every beast he could see was at least level 35, and they were all about to attack. The Ikerpede skidded toward him faster now, clacking its pincers together in anticipation. It was only 50 yards away. The Chaos Seed looked about frantically. The only potential weapon he could see was a gnawed leg bone. He had no idea what kind of creature had left it behind, but it was as big as a Louisville slugger. Part of him realized that this bone was only here because the Icorpedes had been able to bring down such a large beast. A bigger part of him told that part to shut the fuck up. It was game time. As the giant insects closed the distance, Richter began to prepare. Minor chitin carapace thickened his skin and increased his natural armor by plus four. Weak haste boosted his speed, and weak mirror image made two copies of him. He summoned a sapperling and spider, evolving them both with chaos magic. With the Icorpede only ten yards away, he dismissed his night vision, then cast grease and weak flame in quick succession. The entire circle of brown gravy sludge was set ablaze, enveloping the giant insect in fire. The Icorpede reared back with a hiss of rage. In that position, its head towered five feet above his head. Richter was raising his makeshift bone club to strike when he heard a voice that made his mouth drop open in shock. Floating out of the darkness came a small, winged creature only a single foot in height. His body was ash gray, and black bat wings flapped behind him. The expression on his face was both bored and annoyed. When Zitrix spoke again, his tone was a perfect match. I said, stop playing with those bugs, human. You owe me a favor, and I'm here to collect. The moment of distraction cost Richter dearly. The Icorpede, though damaged by the flames, dove through them. It shot toward the Chaos Seed's figure, its powerful pincers snapping shut on his unarmored body. To its surprise, the figure it had attacked shattered into countless shards of light a moment before disappearing. It was not Richter, merely one of his mirror images. Wasting no time, the real Richter spun and slammed his bone club down onto the head of the Icorpede with all of his strength. The hardened bone slammed into its armored shell and forced its head to the ground. For a single instant, Richter cheered in his heart, but then he was reminded why powerful weapons were a necessity when fighting high-level monsters. Though the force of his strike forced its head down and away, it caused no actual damage. Before he could take a second swing with his impromptu bone club, the monster of the depths struck again, and this time, its aim was true. Richter was knocked off his feet. He landed heavily, the rough rock digging into his bare back. The force of the massive insect's charge propelled him along the ground. Skin and blood were left behind in a gooey pink smear. For the second time in as many minutes, Richter was reminded of the horror of battling without armor or arms. The tattered remains of his clothes offered no real protection. This was not a movie where the action star never really got hurt. This was real life, and it was real agony flaring within him as he struggled for just one more minute of breath. The Icorpede's serrated mandibles sped toward his face. There was not a doubt in Richter's mind that it could rip half his face off if they managed to snap shut. As he fell, his hands shot up and just managed to grab the pincers. The sharp spikes on the inside of the mandibles tore into his hands. Red-hot blood flowed in small rivers onto his face and chest. The scent drove the Icorpede wild, and it surged forward with a high-pitched keening noise. 
as bad as the tearing pain in his hands was, this was not the worst agony. The monster's acidic spit flowed faster as it grew lustful and blood drunk. The scant drops of Richter it had tasted were enough to make its terrible hunger soar. The green-tinted acid from its mouth immediately started eating into Richter's hands. A large drop fell from its mouth and onto his chest with a sizzle, and he could smell his own flesh cooking. His muscles dissolved, cell by cell, sinew by sinew. Richter screamed in agony as the skin and muscle of his chest began to melt and run. His strength attribute was just enough to keep the insect from stealing his life. The lich's curse of eternal servitude had been weakened when Singh suffered the final death, but it could still damn Richter's soul if he died within the next seven days. The scream of pain issuing from his mouth began to be mingled with rage. After everything he had gone through, he would not let his story end like this. The icorpede kept forcing its way forward, trying to bite Richter's head free of his body. Each time it pushed, its mandibles would inch closer before the chaos seed was able to force them back. They continued to skid across the rocky ground, leaving more of the young lord's tissue and blood behind. Richter managed to get his left knee up and brace it against the monster. It kept space between them, but in response, the icorpede plunged some of its countless legs down into his right side. Five of its spike-like appendages sank into his chest, abdomen, and leg. His health dropped by more than 20 points from its first attack.